Money Talks with Charter Bank, a show about money and financial issues that affect you. One-to-one banking, it's how we measure success. Money Talks with Charter Bank. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Money Talks with Charter Bank. I'm your host, Rich Westfall, and I'm excited you've joined us tonight. We've got a very informative show uh, to talk about something that I think uh, could affect everyone. I'm sure you've heard the term payday lending, title loans, short-term Christmas loans. Those are all examples of what we call predatory lending. And we're very excited to have uh, two guests tonight that are very informed uh, about payday lending, the perils of payday lending, solutions, um, and, and, how to, and how to deal with uh, a payday loan once you're in one and, and what your alternatives are. So we're very excited uh, tonight to have our two guests. We have uh, Phaedra Robinson. She is with the Mississippi Center for Justice. You're the Director of Cons Consumer Protection there. Correct. Yeah, welcome. Yes. Well, Thank thanks you. For being Thank here. you for having me. You bet. And Lauren, you're you're the uh, uh, the director of development and compliance with the Gulf Coast Community Foundation. Yes, That's I am. Great. Yeah, great. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming out and being part of Money Talks with with Charter Bank tonight. Well, thank, thank you, you for having. Thank us. Thank you for having us and giving sure. us an opportunity to kind of make people aware of some of the things that are going on in our community. Yeah, great. Thanks, Lauren. And Phaedra, let's, uh, let's start with you. Uh, if you would just take a minute to uh, tell the audience uh, a little bit about your background and what led you uh, to the Mississippi Center for Justice. Sure. I am a native Jacksonian, born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm a graduate of Tougaloo College and University of Mississippi School of Law. Um, after graduating from law school, I entered private practice and worked for a while with the Mississippi House of Representatives and was really yearning for a place to really have a huge impact on people's daily lives and uh, ran across the Mississippi Center for Justice, um, which was founded to um, address issues of economic and racial justice in Mississippi. And uh, because of the way they work and the issues that they were addressing, it was a natural fit for what I was looking to do in my legal career. Um, at the Mississippi Center for Justice, we address issues um, in education, housing, disaster recovery, and um, consumer protection. Yeah. How long have you been with the, with the center? I've been there eight years. We've been in, oh. in existence for 11, and I've been there for yeah. eight. Almost all of them. Almost right? all of them. That's great. Yes. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on to, uh, to the show tonight, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about okay. uh, payday lending and, and your role in, in watching that. Looking so. forward to okay, it. Okay, good. And Lauren, welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, if you would, and uh, maybe uh, uh, talk a little bit about the mission for the Gulf Coast Community Foundation. Sure. Um, I was born here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and spent most of my childhood here. Um, went to, uh, to the University of Mississippi and graduated um, from there and also attended law school at the University of Mississippi. Um, after I got out of law school, I practiced in both public and private practice, but really, really um, most enjoyed um, the opportunities I had to work with nonprofit organizations and like Phaedra, kind of an opportunity to give back and make a difference in my community. So when I had the opportunity to get a work at the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, um, it was just a great opportunity for me um, to, to participate and take part with a group that really does try to build a bigger, better, stronger community. Yeah. Um, the Gulf Coast Community Foundation helps donors give and give to charities in ways that are most meaningful to them. We try to work with donors and provide specialized services, professional services to kind of help guide them through the giving process and give in ways that they're going to see the most impact in the community. Yeah. So. And how long have you been with the, with the foundation? Um, I have been there seven years now. Seven years. That's, that's terrific, Lauren. Thank you so much. That's great. I, I, know, I know a lot of the great work that uh, you've done and, and the foundation has done over the years. Uh, through the Coming Home Collaborative and, and, and several of the recovery um, activities that we had after Katrina and after the oil spill. Um, I think I remember the foundation did close to 60 to 65, maybe even $70 million 
in recovery work after those disasters. So you guys have made a huge impact uh, for the folks that live in this community. That's great. Well, That's thank great. you, Ray. Yeah, you bet. Well, let's talk about the issue at hand a little bit, uh, payday lending, predatory lending, whatever you want to call it. Um, and Phaedra, would you, uh, would you, well, let's just, let's just, uh, let's just get, get to basics here. Why, can you, can you describe what constitutes payday lending? Sure. Uh, payday lending is a form of predatory lending, and a payday loan is a small, short-term loan that a consumer would get uh, when they have a budget shortfall. In Mississippi, the most that um, a borrower could get is $500, mm -hmm. um, and the typical loan in Mississippi is about two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, the structure of those loans is that um, you would pay $22 for every $100 that you borrow up to $250. And uh, for a loan for two fifty one to five hundred dollars, it's twenty dollars per one hundred dollars borrowed. Mm -hmm. um, most consumers that get these loans can't afford to pay them back when they're due because it's one payment, which is called a balloon payment, mm -hmm. and all of the loan is due on your very next payday. As a result of that, we see that um, most people can't pay it off and walk away from the loan without. Um, receiving another loan, right. and so it becomes a cycle of debt that is unmanageable for most consumers in Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see where it's a slippery slope. Um, why do you think people uh, seek uh, to get uh, a, a payday loan or a title loan? Sure, most people um, that we've encountered aren't earning living wages, meaning that they are working hard, they have jobs and working hard every day, but they don't make enough money to sustain um, their lifestyle. And uh, we've heard um, people mention that people are living above their means, when in a lot of cases that's just not the case. They're just not earning enough um, in order to maintain the lifestyle that they have. Um, as a result of that, when an emergency happens or when they can't make it from check to check, mm -hmm. they seek a resource. And because payday loans are on every corner, because car title loans are on every corner, and they're so easily accessible, yeah. um, it makes it an easy fix for them to walk into the store in 15 minutes, walk out with a loan that they think will address what their need is. And in yeah. many cases, uh, what they have truly started, as you said, is a slippery slope because yeah only 2% of the people that get those loans can afford to pay them off um, within the, the time that it's due, within the time frame that it's due and right. not um, receive a, a second loan. Wow, that, I tell you, that is, that, is, that is a scary thought. But, you know, you look at someone who has, um, has limited funds and, and maybe for whatever reason has, they've run out of their cash flow mm -hmm. and still, you know, there's kids, they, they need to feed, they need to provide milk. That, you know those kinds of things. Right. Um, I, w would those be reasons why people would go out and seek those kind of loans? Typically, what research has shown is that most people are getting the loans for recurring expenses, which are the very things that you discuss. It's mm -hmm. uh, paying a utility bill that's going to come every month, yeah, or where they're going to come turn note. the power water off. Absolutely. So it's for those um, sorts of bills that people are receiving payday loans, and we understand that people are going to have uh, difficulties. What we stress is that people need a small loan; they don't necessarily need a short-term loan mm -hmm. because of the way these loans are structured it makes it very difficult, almost impossible, for people to pay them off. If you're having difficulty and you need a small loan, mm -hmm. um, more than likely you can't afford to give all that money back and right. walk away. Absolutely. Um, so the terms of the loan, the way the loans are uh, structured, makes it difficult for people to receive the true benefit of having a small loan. Okay. Um, it's all, all the benefit basically is to the um, industry. This industry makes hundreds of millions of dollars in our state every year at the uh, peril of our consumers. Right. Um, we think that there needs to be a lot more regulation on this loan yeah. and that the interest rate is absolutely too high. Absolutely. And Lauren, I know you and Phaedra worked together on an initiative to inform the community about the perils of payday lending uh, over the past few years. Um, knowing all of this, why did and how did uh, the Gulf Coast Community the Foundation get, in, get involved in this issue? Phaedra um, and some other representatives from the Mississippi Center for Justice came back um, to speak to the com some representatives from the Community Foundation in 2012 um, to kind of tell us a little bit about um, payday lending in our community and the impact that it, that it had. 
And to be honest, I had heard of payday lending. Um, I knew it was a problem. Um, I knew it was an issue. But I wasn't aware of the impact that really it had on families and on our, you know, um, okay. the economic, you know, um, stability of families within our community. And when, when Phaedra and, um, and, and them came to talk to us, I, mean, I, was, I was shocked. I really was. I thought, how can I live in this community and not realize um, truly what's kind of going on every day in the links that some people are having to go to You get. drive down the road and you can count 20 uh, right. okay. title loan places, payday loan places, and they're usually next to each other um, and, and getting ready for the show. Uh, as I drove down the street, I guess I'm more aware, but they seem to be almost every, almost every corner, almost every more than Waffle House uh, as, as you go along. So what, uh, what were some of the initiatives that you guys kicked off? Well, um, shortly after Phaedra came to meet with us, um, the Knight Foundation um, kicked off their um, Community Information Challenge grant um, yeah. initiative, and we were funded through Knight. Um, we had a lot of local support, um, the Center for Justice, the Community Foundation, um, in partnership with six local banks, all um, put up the match funding required um, to secure that grant funding. With those funds, um, we embarked on a year of sort of educational programs. Yeah. Um, we went to meet with community groups, um, Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis Clubs, just to kind of let people within the community know what was going on. We also met with um, consumers, potential consumers, to kind of try to educate them okay. regarding some of the pitfalls of payday lending and what the alternatives are. You know, Mm -hmm. ways to avoid getting in that situation and things to, to do um, to get out of that situation once they find themselves there. Um, and we also um, did train the trainer um, sessions where we worked with nonprofit groups um, to help train them on ways to educate people that they came in contact with. Yeah, yeah. Finally, we worked with banks um, mm -hmm. to try to increase the number of small loan um, alternative programs. Yeah. Because, you know, if there's not alternatives, then people really don't have a choice. Absolutely. And of course everyone knows the Knight Foundation is, uh, um, is supports the Knight Cities and the Knight Cities uh, are cities where they uh, printed newspapers. They, right. uh, the uh, Knight Ritter owned the, the Sun Herald. So they've adopted the Mississippi Gulf Coast as a Knight community and they have been very generous in, in what they have uh, donated to our area. Uh, and having this initiative through the Community Information Challenge through the Knight Foundation is just another example of their commitment to, to help improve, engage, and inform our community. So I think that's wonderful. We've been very fortunate for the continued support that the Knight Foundation has given, um, given our community and the foundation, especially following Hurricane Katrina. They really kind of stepped up and, and um, took a, played a key role in, in mm -hmm. um, in the restoration, so yeah. Well, Phaedra, let's 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 go back to a little more detail in okay. in a in a predatory loan or payday loan. Um, who is the typical borrower? Let's say um, over sixty percent of their customer base women, um, and primarily what you see are single mothers that are using um, payday loans, and this is actually one of their peak seasons right now. Um, Christmas. Oh yeah. Yeah, people are trying to um, make Christmas happen for their children, and that's one of the uh, resources that they seek to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the professions that we see um, that are using these services are teachers and civil servants, our police officers, um, our um, guards at the prisons and jails are the people who are using the professions that we see using payday loans. Yeah, that uh, that that that's almost shocking. Uh, it, to, to think uh, uh, people in a profession would be in a position like that, but I guess today in, in, in the times we live in, that, that becomes more and more prevalent, um, and, and I think it could probably happen to just about anybody in uh, whatever income level. Uh, if expenses mm -hmm. outweigh income, you know, there's, there are issues you face, and, and, you, and you try to solve those issues the best way you can. Absolutely, and we've seen, um, according to research data, um, since the economic downturn, you've had more professions to use um, payday loans, more middle class people mm -hmm. um, than ever before were utilizing yeah. payday loans to make ends meet. So that is absolutely true. Yeah. And again, it goes back to people not uh, making 
living sustainable wages and it just makes it very difficult when those emergencies happen or when um, you know you have increase in utilities and you don't have an increase in pay right it makes it very difficult for people to make ends meet no question about it or if your your car stops working or Absolutely. just whatever and you know you become ill or you you have some sort of accident you know though anything can happen uh, like that we were so. we were shocked once we began this program and we got some media exposure, we were shocked at the number of people who called the Community Foundation, teachers, people people actually worked for, that worked for media outlets and in all different facets of our community that would call and say, I'm in this situation. I took out a loan and I can't get out. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, now that I've taken it, there's no way to get out from underneath it. Absolutely, and we're very sensitive to this issue with our senior population. We have quite a few uh, elders who are either paying back loans for uh, family members or who themselves have gotten a payday loan and it takes them much longer to get out of it than yeah. it does um, the people who are working because they are on a fixed income and so it just makes it nearly impossible for them to overcome a payday loan. Tell, tell me a little bit about the interest rates. I understand that they can get quite high in the 500 percent range? Absolutely. Uh, in Mississippi, the interest rate on a payday loan is 521 percent. On the high end, on the low end, is 267 percent interest. Um, compare that to a bank or a credit union who's capped at 36 percent interest, and you see why we are appalled at this interest rate being that high uh, for such a small amount of money. There's no question about it. I just, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I know later in the show, we'll uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about some solutions, mm -hmm. some education opportunities, some alternatives, and also some of the work that you guys are doing, the Center for Justice is doing at the state level to to work to, to help correct some of this also. Um, can, uh, can a payday lending institution, let's say, um, take a different form or is it just one of those buildings there on the corner or are there other providers for that? Uh, sure. Um, you have the storefront payday lending but you also have a lot of internet payday lending and the internet uh -huh. payday lending is um, worse um, mm -hmm. in, than storefront payday lending. The interest rate when that can top a thousand percent interest. Yeah. Um, and so it gets to be a very dangerous thing mm -hmm. because they have access to, um, direct access to your checking account uh, because they have the ACH authorization in order to deposit the funds into yeah. your account. Um, and we found where people have been scammed, um, they would go online to enter their information to up, um, to apply for a payday loan. Mm -hmm. And that information will be shared with several brokers. Well. Broker A may actually give you the loan, but Broker C will call and harass you to say, I gave you a loan, you're not making payments. Right. I need you to make a payment on this loan. Um, so we've had people in Mississippi to be scammed yeah. um, in that way by um, some online payday lenders. Yeah, I've also heard that uh, through, through uh, an online application, um, a, an agent might come on and request a couple of hundred dollars for origination fee. Yes. and then come back for another fee and then eventually not ever answer the phone or or, or the uh, or email issue the loan. Issue Correct. and never mm -hmm. issue a loan. So we'd, we'd really like for our consumers to and viewers out there to really kind of watch for that. That's, uh, that's something that uh, I think we really need to, to uh, get that information out to everybody. Absolutely. You yeah. need to guard your personal information, um, especially during this time of year mm -hmm. where people are feeling the budget pinches a little more so than in other times of the year. And, um, and then sometimes there's more desperation to get the money and they will seek out other opportunities. And these are some that you need to be very mindful of because they, they continuously scam uh, people and their interest rates are not sustainable for anybody who needs a small loan. Yeah, outside of online and, and all of that, are there other sure. retail uh, there are, sites? There um, are a lot of um, different types of predatory loans, predatory institutions in our state. Um, you have the car title loans whose interest rates are about 350 percent interest for a car title loan. Um, you have rent to own stores whose interest rates top um, 100 percent um, and some exceeds that. Um, you know, we're getting ready to go into tax season. Uh, you have some shops that are still doing refund anticipation loans. 
those loans can be as much as 500% interest as well. So there are a lot of forms of predatory lending that exist in our communities, and we just want to educate consumers on how to avoid those because what happens is it's high-cost credit, and you're paying a lot more for those loans than, um, than necessary that you should have to pay. And as a result of that, you're losing money on yeah. those loans. Yeah. Um, in most cases, for a payday loan, you pay back more in fees than the actual uh, loan amount. The average loan in Mississippi is about $300. Mm -hmm. And a $300 loan will cost you about $366. People are paying back as much as nine hundred or thousand dollars in yeah. fees for that loan. That's amazing. One caught my attention and that was the income tax refund loan. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, explain that a little bit. Sure. Uh, what typically happens is a consumer goes in to get their taxes done and they will say, well, you qualify to get a, um, a income tax uh, refund loan um, and so, or a refund anticipation loan. A lot of people call them so a So in rail. other words, I, I get my refund right now you get part of it. They will give you as much as 50% of your anticipated refund. Okay. And when, you're, um, when your taxes come in, it comes directly to that business, and you pay them the loan back, and then they release the remainder of your yeah. um, income tax return. And what we found is the fees are really high. Um, these people who work in these places are not going through background checks. People have been scammed. Identities have been stolen. Mm -hmm. um, the refunds have not turned out to be um, the amount that they were told it was going to be. So there have been a lot of issues with um, income tax preparation places, and some have actually been shut down wow. in our state as mm -hmm. a result of um, how they were uh, doing business and how they yeah. were risking uh, consumers not being able to get their income tax refunds returned. That's, it's a difficult situation. How is your experience working with the Center, uh, Mississippi Center for Justice and putting your program together? I know there was a lot of work that you put in to, to apply for the, the community, community in, information challenge. How did that go? Um, it went well. Um, you know, we were fortunate to be able to work with the Mississippi Center for Justice. Um, they've been working with um, payday lending um, and to address payday lending for many years now. And so what we did was we tried to combine them, use some of our local, um, our relationships with local resources um, to sort of get them in front of the right groups and um, help them reach out. So, I mean, that was one um, one aspect. We also did some, um, worked with them to do some direct mailing pieces um, to, the, to consumers to mm -hmm. warn them about the dangers of payday lending. Mm -hmm. um, we had an online campaign um, on, through social media and um, in addition to a lot of the um, the one-on-one yeah, yeah. sessions that we had with, with people. Well, very good. Um, well, we're drawn to uh, uh, the end of this segment, um, and we appreciate you guys being here to kind of get us through the detail of payday lending. Uh, and, and when we come back in our next segment, we will, uh, I think, try and talk a little bit about some solutions, some okay. alternatives, education opportunities um, to get people through past that slippery slope, so to speak. So be okay. sure to uh, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back on Money Talks with Charter Bank. If our lives are getting so much better, why has banking fallen so far behind with monthly fees and bad service? Welcome to Mega Bank. Please hold. Welcome to Casasa. Free checking with monthly rewards, refunds on ATM fees, and your choice of cash, music, and extra money to save. Upgrade to a free Casasa account today. Carried locally at Charter Bank. Do you, Casasa? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Money Talks with Charter Bank and our two special guests today, Lauren Williams with the Gulf Coast Community Foundation and Phaedra Robinson with the Mississippi Center for Justice. We really appreciate you guys being here. And, you know, we're talking about a serious, serious issue mm -hmm. with uh, predatory lending, uh, better known as payday lending, title loans and that kind of thing. And the first segment, I thought you guys did a really good job explaining the detail of what a predatory loan is, who the audience is, who the borrower is the impacts on individuals and the impact on everyone in our community with this situation and we did talk a little bit about reasons why people t 
take these type of loans. So uh, I think we did a good job explaining all of that. Uh, and now I think um, I'd like to maybe uh, talk a little bit about solutions and alternatives. Uh, and I think to, to do that, I think we have to understand some of the obstacles we you have faced in addressing payday lending. Either one of you guys want to take that one? Phaedra? Sure. Um, we've approached this from a consumer education um, position as well as from a policy position. So um, in from a policy standpoint, it was a very difficult getting any progressive policy passed that would really assist consumers mm -hmm. um, because of the lobbying efforts of the industry. They um, did everything they could to protect this extremely high interest rate. They put a lot of money into um, lobbying the state legislature and as a result of that um, our original interest rate was 572 percent mm -hmm. and um, they decreased it to 521 percent in excess if we were satisfied with those uh, reform efforts and of course we weren't. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that we speak um, for a lot of people who are struggling um, to make ends meet and knowing the impact of this loan um, on that community we were not satisfied with those efforts. Yeah. We've also worked with the lo local municipalities and county uh, governments in order to uh, help them structure moratoriums and uh, resolutions to uh, give to the state uh, body yeah. on this issue as well. Yeah. Um, we also partnered with um, a lot of advocates and nonprofits and um, other like-minded organizations in order to create a uh, coalition called Mississippians for Fair Lending yeah. um, in order to educate the, con the consumer on um, the impact of this loan and, and where resources can be found if sure. they found themselves in need of a loan. And so we um, had to get people to understand that this was not a benefit for you to be able to walk in and get this loan in 15 minutes without any consideration of your ability to repay the loan. So mm -hmm. they saw it as a benefit and we had to change the mindset to say it's not really a benefit. Let's talk about you know, the true impact. Let's do the math and show you how much it's costing you yeah. to have this loan. So, yeah. um, but in partnership, we've, I think, done a really good job of, of educating people on yeah. what's going on with this industry. Yeah, I know it's a big, it's, you know, with the, the number of retail outlets that you see just here, but and not only just here, but throughout the state. Yes. And uh, I think you guys have done a good job. Orrin, how about you? Well, uh, one of the obstacles had to have been how to, what audience, how, how do you reach the audience that, to, to help educate that audience. That was a difficult a difficult part of the process because a lot of these people didn't self-identify um, as being payday lenders. Um, a lot of people, that's not something that they want to share. Um, so we really had to work hard to try to reach out to nonprofit partners who may work with some of these groups, um, um, worked with some um, research companies that tried to help us find um, some mm -hmm. payday lenders who had self-identified so we could kind of reach out to them through our direct mail campaign. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we realized is while education is absolutely absolutely key. Education in isolation, it's just not enough. Yeah. I mean, we have to have some alternatives for people. Yeah. Um, you know, the reality is, is we can educate people and let them know what the pitfalls are. But if, you know, if a single mom, you know, you said 60% of all payday loan, um, loan consumers are, are, are single mothers, and the reality is, um, if those mothers need a loan and there's no other place for them to go to get it, no matter how educated they are, most of them are going to ask, where do I need to sign? If yeah. I need milk for my child, Absolutely. where do I sign? And so I think it's imperative that we involve local banks um, and local credit unions, um, and many of them have been very interested in participating um, and are developing and have small loan um, alternatives. Yeah. So there are many banks here and credit unions on the coast that you can call Good. that have small loan programs. Good. That's excellent. Um, we only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, I did. Uh, there's one question I really wanted to ask, and that is, uh, what 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 sort of activity is taking place now with the new legislative sessions kicking off after the first of the year? What sort of activities, uh, a lobbying or whatever, are you guys doing at the state level? Um, we will be going back to the state legislature again this year, asking them to reconsider. Um, the payday lending laws and to really strengthen them on behalf of consumers. Um, in the previous efforts, um, the businesses, the industry were successful in uh, making sure that all of their uh, wants were considered. And this time we're going back to say, you know, you um, allowed them uh, to 
have the upper hand last time, can you please consider that consumers are hurting yeah. and that we really need you to cons- um, to lower the interest rate and to make this um, these loans better for consumers? Otherwise, um, I think we're going to have a, a serious issue uh, with what's um, happening um, yeah. in the Continue. financial yeah. services areas today. Yeah. We're also looking to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They are researching and taking a look at this um, industry as well, and they have sued a couple of online lender, uh, lenders and done some cease and desist yeah. um, efforts to uh, make this a better industry for consumers. And so we're also looking to them to strengthen mm-hmm. Um, their regulations uh, regarding petty lending. Well, now, um, pl- please uh, tell her if someone needs to get more information about this, mm-hmm. how do they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, they can go to our website. It's www.mscenterforjustice.org, or they can contact our um, Jackson office at 601 352 How about you, Lauren, if someone has a question? Um, If someone has a question, they can contact the Gulf Coast Community Foundation at www.mgccf.org or they can call our office at 228-897-4841. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, you I think you uh, have given some information to our viewers that will be useful during the holiday season. uh, And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here on on our show. Thank you for highlighting this issue. We appreciate it. You bet. And thank you all for joining us again tonight. And join us every week at seven on Tuesday night at 730 for Money Talks with Charter Bank on WKFK Channel 7. Money Talks with Charter Bank, a show about money and financial issues that affect you. One-to-one banking, it's how we measure success. Money Talks with Charter Bank. We're always looking for better ways to do things, but with some banks, better for them isn't always better for you. You've reached Mega Bank. Press 1 to hear your current balance. Press 2 to hear these options again. Introducing free Casasa checking. When you do stuff for us, like swipe your debit card or get e-statements, we make it even better for you with cash back and refunds on ATM fees. Casasa, carried locally at Charter Bank. Do you, Casasa?